So hello, uh, my name is Nemanja, and uh, this is joint work by uh, by uh, ad targeting and mail teams at Yahoo. In particular, this is work by uh, Mihalo Grbović, Vladan Radosavljević, uh, Nara Mabiripati, Jaikit Savla, Varun Bagvan, and Doug Sharp. A uh, major part of this talk will be distributed embeddings, which, which have uh, recently gained uh, quite a lot in popularity. Uh, at Yahoo, we adopted this and expanded uh, uh, this idea into, to be applied into a number of locations at Yahoo. So if you're interested, you can take a look at our uh, search retargeting query categorization works. They're published at uh, WWW this year, at query writing, SIGIR. Uh, also, there's targeting at Tumblr, which uh, we will have a talk tomorrow. And uh, here we will we'll talk about uh, how we apply these methods to improve our targeting at, uh, at Yahoo Mail. First, uh, we can say that we can't really avoid uh, ads in, uh, in, our, in Yahoo email accounts. And the idea, is to, our, the idea behind this work is to improve uh, user experience and in the process uh, make some revenue for, for the company uh, through product ads. So what are the product ads? If, uh, if uh, we know that the user bought, uh, in this case, uh, a travel guide to Hawaii, then we can, uh, we can show uh, an ad for a specific product, which is in this case uh, snorkeling gear, which can be seen here in the so-called so -called, uh, pencil, pencil ad slot. And not only that, but we can, even, even though the user bought an item from Amazon, we can show an ad uh, with product from Walmart. So this, uh, this is the idea behind, the, behind how to improve the targeting. So hundreds of millions of users are, are uh, checking their inboxes on a daily basis. And uh, however, uh, all these users are mostly, are usually very focused on the tasks that they're performing right now. So they're, they're very focused on, on the mail and to check and send, uh, send the messages, right? But in order to, in order to uh, uh, show the, make them uh, notice your ad and to click on it, ads need to be very, uh, very relevant. So uh, efficient and effective personalization and targeting is critical for this task. And if you succeed in this task, then of course we will get uh, higher revenue through clicks and better user experience, which is exactly what we are aiming for. How we want to do this is through uh, exploiting inbound emails. Uh, this is a very uh, still insufficiently explored and exploited area uh, uh, for the purpose of ad targeting. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, there's very very few works uh, published that uh, that deal with inbound emails. One of these works is a recent uh, recent study by uh, Yahoo Lab scientists, which showed that uh, it was published at uh, CIKM 2014, uh, which shows that only 10% of inbound volume uh, comes from uh, humans. The rest, 90%, uh, is, uh, is uh, purely uh, computer generated. And out of these 90%, more than 22% represent, uh, 22 represent uh, emails related to online shopping. So clearly, this, this, uh, this is really a, a treasure trove of data. Uh, it's, it's even more so by the fact that, uh, given the fact that uh, now we have standardized online receipts, which are very common, which allow us to extract uh, product information such as uh, name, uh, price, and others uh, without uh, much noise. And uh, we also get uh, multiple, uh, data from multiple retailers. As we showed there, uh, we, come from, uh, we have data from Walmart, eBay, and other retailers, which gives us a very nice picture of the, of the market. OK, so uh, let's take a look at the data set that was used in this study. Uh, it was, uh, we used data from receipts from March to October, which includes a subset of users who opted in for, for such studies. Uh, we extracted product names and uh, purchase times. In total, there are 280 million purchases made by 29 million users coming from 170 commercial domains. And in total, there are around uh, 2 million unique bought items uh, that, are, that are valued over $5. Now, before going to uh, modeling, we first wanted to see, uh, uh, to see about our data to learn some, uh, some useful insights. Uh, so that's why we were interested how different uh, users uh, behave in terms of online shopping, depending on their uh, demographics. So in the first figure, we showed the percentage of uh, online shoppers um, among all online shoppers. 
uh, segregated by gender and age. And here we can see that uh, overall uh, age, age brackets, there are more online shoppers, females than males. However, in the second, uh, in the second figure, we show uh, average product price, again, segregated by, by uh, uh, age and gender, where we see that uh, even though there are more female, female shoppers, males actually buy more expensive items. Uh, we also checked uh, how does this depend on, on user location. So here we show percentage of shoppers among, online sh among all online uh, users, segregated by age and by uh, location. Uh, here we only took uh, uh, data from the United States. So that's why we have uh, only US. Uh, we also show average number of purchases uh, per user. We didn't segregate by gender here because for males and uh, females, we, we saw very similar patterns. So that's why we only here show for location and age. And we also show average amount spent by user and average price of purchase item. And what we can conclude here that there are really significant differences between, between different demographics and different, different uh, users in different locations. So for example, we can see that there's a cluster of sta northern states where users shop often and shop a lot when they're younger, while for older populations, this is Northeast, California, Washington, and so on. So the uh, conclusion is that um, you know, users are really different depending on their age, gender, and, and state, and the location. So this is what we will use this insight to, to try and uh, improve our modeling as well. Uh, okay. Now that we learned something about our data, we wanted to see how one of the most commonly used baselines is performing. In particular, how, uh, how, what, which results we get if we simply recommend popular items. And here, popular item is, uh, we get popular items by simply counting number of purchases for, for our, from our data set, sorting the items by the number of uh, purchases, and then uh, recommending the top ones. Uh, what we're interested here is uh, uh, in a look back parameter, meaning how much, how much do we have to go in past to compute these items. So we can, uh, we can compute popular items for just for yesterday or just for, for the entire month uh, preceding the present. Uh, and in the first figure, we can see that uh, the, the, uh, it's better to take uh, more recent past when computing these popular items. And also that these pop all popular items, uh, they, they become stale very, very uh, quickly. So after three to seven days, we already, we, uh, the accuracy drops significantly and we need to, uh, it's then we should uh, retrain our model and recompute. Uh, in, this, in the second figure, because we observed that uh, users from different demographics behave differently, we wanted to compute uh, to see how, how does it uh, perform when we compute popular items, not globally, we, as in the first slide, as in the first figure, but for each, uh, for each uh, gr user group uh, separately. And the blue line uh, in both figures corresponds, corresponds to the same method, meaning globally popular items. And you can see that uh, we get, if we, if we uh, get the finest resolution, if we segment users by state, age, and gender, we get uh, the very nice boost in, uh, in uh, performance. Okay, so this method was, is very um, common. It's, as I said, it's very intuitive, but uh, we were also uh, thinking, uh, can we use something more, comp something more uh, smart, something more involved to improve the targeting? And we, we consider the neural language models uh, in the terms of, in context of NLP, they induce low dimensional distributed embeddings of, of uh, words using neural networks. And uh, in particular, word 2 vec which was just pr proposed, is uh, now very popular. You can find a bunch of papers uh, written around word 2 vec And it's been applied to modeling sentences, graphs, uh, app uh, predictions, and many other applications. So our, our question was, can we, can we take this, uh, this uh, uh, method and uh, use it to help in product recommendations? Uh, and the, we consider three methods. Uh, Protovec is basically uh, well, Vertovec, only that we, we refer to it as Protovec simply to make, sh make uh, its application area clear. Uh, so this is just a Vertovec skipgram. We also uh, proposed bagged Protovec, 
where we expanded the, the original method to account for the, for the fact that uh, in, uh, in, in uh, online receipts, some items can be bought at the same time, so they can be part of the same shopping, shopping bag. So we model this with bagged protoEC. And finally, we have user toEC, which is uh, simply paragraph toEC, uh, where we embed users uh, in the same space as products. Now, these, all these methods are, are very efficient. They're, they scale easily to millions of users and products. And uh, how we train these models is that we consider the uh, we consider the users as sentences, and then their pro uh, their uh, purchased products were used as words, uh, uh, so ordered by the time of, their, of the purchase. And now, once we train these these uh, vectors, we can on top of them we can do some clustering or nearest, nearest neighbor searches. As we will see, we can we can come up with some recommendation uh, methods where we could, uh, for example, find that that uh, uh, the uh, travel, travel guide on Hawaii is near close neighbor to, to uh, uh, snorkeling gear, sorry. Okay, so now we trained our, our model. We, got, uh, we obtained the vectors for all the products and, and the users. And now the question is how to actually uh, do the recommendations. Uh, we consider two approaches, top K and cluster approach, where for top K, given some recent bought, recently bought item, we find the uh, K nearest neighbors and we recommend these items to the user. Or uh, in the second approach, we first cluster the, the products, then we estimate the probabilities uh, that some cluster I follows some other cluster J, and then uh, given a bought uh, product and its uh, and its cluster, we can retrieve nearest neighbors from each of the top uh, the high, highest probability clusters given this uh, purchase cluster. And now we move on to experiments. First, uh, just to show that this, this actually works. Uh, given these three items, movie Despicable Me, then a learning aid for, for medical, uh, medical license examination, and lunch napkins that, are, that have a Disney Frozen team, we see that the nearest neighbors are very related. So, for example, for lunch napkins that have a team of Disney Frozen, we got uh, cups, plates, table covers that all have, or they are, that are all Disney themed. So we, we see that we actually learned uh, quite useful uh, representations of, of our items. Uh, here we show that clustering, uh, clustering actually results in more diverse recommendations, and we'll see that this this method uh, gave us the, the best results. If we have an item supernova dry snorkel, and we just take top K items to recommend, we we get some uh, some nice products, but they are mostly uh, come from similar types. So we we get uh, you know masks and masks and snorkel and snorkeling masks. However, if we first cluster the products, then we might get some. Uh, Mask cluster, then socks cluster, um, goggle cluster, and the camera cluster. And now we can we can retrieve top, for example, I don't know two or three items from each of the clusters, and we can make our recommendations uh, more interesting for the user. Now we we call these uh, uh, items predicted products uh, as as opposed to the popular uh, products. Uh, we compare them to the to the previously best uh, popular products approach, which is uh, which very segregate users by state, age, and gender. And for each uh, group, we compute uh, the uh, popular ones, popular items. And uh, this orange line is actually the blue, the best one from the from the figure that I shown five minutes ago. And we see that all these embedding methods uh, g get significant boost over the over, over this popular item popular, popular items approach. The best uh, on the first day was uh, user to vec However, this dropped very quickly after the first day. And uh, uh, overall, uh, we found that the best method was uh, pro to vec clustered, which, was, uh, which, uh, which got the highest, uh, highest accuracy over, over the whole month. And it was very robust. For, this, for uh, seven days after the model was trained, it got, it, uh, we got very stable uh, accuracy. Uh, we also uh, evaluated this, these methods in, uh, in a live bucket, 
we, com we had the three buckets, control, popular items, and predicted items bucket. And in terms of CTR, we, got, uh, we saw that po both popular and predicted are better than, than the control. Uh, and the predicted, predicted bucket actually uh, uh, outperformed the popular one. We also measured the yield, yield rate for popular and predicted uh, bucket and found that uh, predicted bucket got uh, increase by around 7% in yield rate. Uh, this is also an interesting result where we, ha where we have daily uh, test daily res excuse me results from the from the popular and uh, and predicted buckets and uh, we can see how uh, how the accuracy CTR drops until we update the model and uh, as confirmed by our offline experiments this up model update affects more the popular items than than predicted ones and uh, yeah, this uh, following the bucket result, these bucket results, this was uh, the methods were imp were implemented in production. Now to conclude, uh, we, we saw that inbound email data is underutilized, and we can do you know, smart things with it. Uh, we observed significant differences between various user groups, and we also saw that neural language models are also very uh, applicable even in in the in this for this recommendation problem. And uh, we we outperformed the popular ones, popular uh, items uh, approach. And uh, even though it's, uh, it's implemented in production, it's it's not fully online. Where we are waiting for the holiday season to to uh, show this. So be make sure to check your Yahoo mail around it around that season to see how we're doing. And that's that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so how do you extract uh, the product name from the emails uh, in your experiment? Product uh, name? Yes. Uh, uh, we, we extract product names from, we have a, they are, uh, uh, they're standardized, so we can easily extract uh, uh, these product names, product price, product, uh, you know, manufacturer, all these things. Because most of these receipts have a very standardized form now. And uh, just to, uh, we, we extracted only emails from the white list of, uh, of retailers, which is to, you know, so it's, everything was legit. Do you account for different email types in your training data? Like uh, you have some email where it's just recommended products from Amazon and you have some emails where like, okay, you brought, you bought this product from Amazon. Do you, while constructing uh, your training data? You mean do we, do we view same product from different vendors differently? Uh, no, no. My question is like you have different type of emails from vendors. Like so some emails you bought this product and some email it might be like this product is recommended for you. Okay, yes. We only take uh, the purchase products, only receipts, and not, uh, not the recommendations or newsletters or something like that. So you have a pre-classifier that classifies receipts from promotional mails. Yes. yes. Uh, have you compared uh, prod to VEC uh, approach with traditional collaborative filtering? Uh, in this case, uh, we, we have not. We found that this was, uh, this was uh, we have millions and millions of products. We found that this is extremely scalable. And uh, so we focused on this method. Uh, well, I, I guess we found that this was uh, good enough for, for our production and for our you know, marketing people. So that's why uh, we use this. You mentioned about the five days, seven day of uh, the look back. So for the users who do not necessarily uh, purchase like, like uh, five days after the, the previous purchase, right? So how do you uh, deal with that situation? If, if uh, we don't have any previous purchases, then we fall back to the popular items in order to still be able to recommend. Uh, what is your intuition about why are the user to work uh, on dropouts uh, so quickly, I mean, in terms of uh, look ahead days uh, in comparison with pro to work, pro -to -work yeah, models. 
Uh, well, I, I would say perhaps we we uh, um, we overfit. I guess that would be one one uh, uh, explanation. Well, I'm not sure if that's that's uh, actually the case, but I, that could be one plausible explanation. Sure. Let's uh, thank you, Nemanja, for the excellent talk. Thank you so much.